Jason Cole, NFL reporter for Bleacher Report. Follow him on Twitter. He's a great follow, at Jason Cole, BR. Always insightful, never sarcastic. Uh, kind enough to join us for a couple of moments on a Tuesday. What's going on, pal? Keeping busy? Oh, life is, life is good. <laughs> are, are, are you uh, in Indy? I was. I'm okay. coming home now. All right, that's good. All yeah. right. You had a good trip out there, though? Yeah, it's always productive. Yeah, you see right. a lot of people who talk to I mean, it's, you do the gap thing, which is what reporters do. That's right, the gift of gab, right? Uh, I'll get your thoughts on uh, the Combine in a moment. Let's get to uh, a couple of the, uh, if you will, the hot stories. Uh, all right, Mike Lennon uh, doesn't have the agent now. He has an agent. What? what? <sighs> Where first of all is he is he in your eyes worth fourteen to fifteen million? And second point is second question part is you know where do you ultimately think he's going to land? Is it going to be Chicago with the Bears? It looks like it's going to be Chicago with the Bears. So I answer the second question first. Um, that's what I anticipate is going to happen. But the Jets may get in on this one, and the Forty ers have shown some interest too. But those are the main three. And it appears Chicago's the main one because uh, they definitely need a quarterback and. They don't think they're getting a chance to get Cousins, who they think is the best one on the market. That's just not going to happen. And the Garoppolo, they're not going to pay a first-round pick for Garoppolo and pay him. So, right. you know, put that combination together, it gets you to Glennon. Is he worth 14 or $15 million? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I've never seen him play live. I saw him in senior bowl practices, and, you know, that was, you know, five years ago. Um, it looked okay, but I, I can't tell you anything more than that. I, I you know, I, I know he's played about what sixteen, seventeen, eighteen games, something like that. How yes. he's done well in those, but those were that was with some bad, uh, those were some bad Buccaneer teams. There was a reason they lost. You know, they didn't have much around him at that point in time. So I look if they believe in him, they think he's good. Yeah, more power to him. I hope it works. Five, five and thirteen is a uh, starter with Tampa Bay, which kind of goes to the next question: if if there's the report that's true that Tampa Bay was going to offer him a substantial amount of money to be a backup, is that them trying to drive up the price for him from a market standpoint, or is that an indictment on what they feel potentially about Jameis Winston going forward? No, I think it's they like him, and they have you know they're spending so little money on Jameis Winston that felt like let's you know, try and keep a good backup while we can. And But he was never going to sign there for $8 million a year. He just, the market was too good. At the beginning of the combine, you know, when I talked to him, um, talked to somebody close to him, uh, probably was, what was it, on Wednesday? Um, he was already at like $12 million by that time. So there was no way he was taking the $8 million a year to stay in, in Tampa. So that was just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, you mentioned the Bears were hoping to maybe get a crack at Cousins or Garoppolo. You mentioned Cousins before, and now I'll, I'll ask you about McLuhan in a moment, but the whole Cousins situation, you know, he said, okay, I wouldn't mind getting traded to San Francisco. Now I might be open to Cleveland. I think I can win there. Uh, what's going on with Washington? I mean, to me, it just – look, I mean, I, I know you 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 know McLuhan. You've spoken to him. Uh, you know, everyone knows the comments by now that Chris Cooley said on ESPN Radio on 980. It's not a station owned by Snyder. It's not a uh, hidden secret that uh, he's got a, a, a drinking problem. He wasn't there. He was vacant at the Combine, which is, uh, again, very rare, if anything. I mean, is, is this a – it just seems not, as though this it's is not a, very rare. It's not very rare. It's unheard of. It's unheard of. It's unheard of. Okay. Uh, it's unheard of. Right. So, but right. be, semantics, yes, it's unheard of. Uh, how – how I don't want to say volatile, but how sensitive is this situation right now with him and 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 Redskins, the the ownership, the brass, and then you you mentioned the Kirk Cousins, and it seems as though okay, maybe I want to get the heck out of here. I think that look, things are incredibly fluid in in the in the front office and management, all right, but they've at least made a public commitment to Jay Gruden to. You know, to try and get something done, right? Which is to give Gruden some assurances that, hey, look, we're trying to keep we're trying to keep things normal right, right now. Right. And if that gives Gruden more say in the situation, um, I think he would prefer to keep Cousins. Now, maybe more along the lines of, hey, look, even if we trade Kirk Cousins, don't worry, we're believing you as a head coach. <laughs> I. I tend to believe that that's more difficult. That's made more difficult when you empower the coach more because the coach wants to keep cousins. I agree. To that. And I've heard, I've heard nothing 
aside from teams being interested in Cousins, I have not heard from the Washington side that they want to trade him. In fact, I got a very strong sense on Saturday in talking to uh, somebody in that front office that they their intention, their every intention right now is to sign Kirk Cousins. Okay. Uh, which again, I you know, it's been a very long time. I read it off yesterday. You know, you look at the quarterbacks that have had two straight years where they played 16 full games uh, with the Washington Redskins. You got to go back to Jason Campbell almost a decade ago. So they've got some consistency. They got a healthy quarterback in his prime. Uh, that's a good fit. Does that lead you believe that Garcon and Jackson will resign with Washington? No, I think I think Jackson's going to cash out and probably go to Tampa at this point in time. And Garcon, maybe they bring him back. Uh, but, I mean, I, I think all along with the kid that they drafted um, last year in the first yep, round yep. and along with Crowder, the intention was to only bring back one of those okay. two guys. They weren't going to be able to afford to bring back both Jackson and Garcon. Yeah. I, I, I never thought that was possible. Uh, every time you look up and you read something and you hear something, it's when, if or when, when the Cowboys release Tony Romo. Every, everyone's got a landing spot for him. Houston, Buffalo, Denver. When the Cowboys release him, I would think any GM has to know, listen, you're you're talking about a 36, 37-year-old, one healthy, very good quarterback. But again, you got to be wary of those injuries. A, what kind of contract? I would assume kind of a low-end incentive lace contract. And, and where do you ultimately see him landing? Uh, I ultimately I see him landing in Denver. I think that'll turn out to be the most attractive place. I think yes, you're talking about a contract that's I don't know is the base going to be six million, eight million, ten million with a lot of roster bonuses. In other words, every game that you're healthy and you're mm-hmm. you're in the lineup, you're getting paid X amount, which gets us gets you back to sixteen, eighteen, twenty million dollars for the year, assuming you're healthy. But you know, we have to know that you're gonna be healthy because it's been two years since you've been on the field on a consistent basis. Yeah. So I think that's only fair. I think that Rome will probably look at that as fair. Uh and I think also given that he's gonna to have to go to a contender, uh, or he wants to go to a contender, he does not want to do a rebuilding project with somebody, that that gives that team more flexibility to put more you know, more weapons around around him. So I think he's going to go along with that. Uh, this is I know a lot of people like to say, well, if Glennon's getting fifteen million or fourteen million dollars, <laughs> how can Romo only take an incentive laden contract? Right. It's like, well, they're they're in very different spots. Yeah, yeah. Now you're right. Very different positions. Uh, you know, because of injuries yep. and because of desire. Yep. You know, Glennon will go to Chicago or the New York Jets. Roma doesn't want to go those. No, 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 no. That's that's where the career will ultimately uh, die. And that's a great point you bring up. Um, all right, uh, quickly before we get to a couple of things on the combine, uh, as far as the Philadelphia Eagles, again, a couple of reports that they were looking to maybe talk with New Orleans to try to trade for Cooks, and then all of a sudden the Titans uh, have a little more firepower as far as uh, draft picks and whatnot, a little more to give up. Um, what, what are you hearing as far as the Philadelphia Eagles and, and trying to get Carson Wentz another weapon? Because then I also read they would also be open to trading Jordan Matthews. Yeah, I think they want some more explosive weapons. I mean, that that offense was anemic. I mean, and part, yeah, anemic, especially in the second half. I mean, part of that's Carson Wentz, you know, being forced to do things that he didn't want to do, and then the, some of its injuries uh, with guys who just weren't on the field. But uh, you know, when you look at that team, you say, I don't see a lot of explosive players. No. Uh, they you, know, you don't see guys who can take a ten yard pass and turn it into a thirty yard pass. So they need to get more guys like that. And Matthews is not really that kind of guy. I think he's a good, relatively good big possession guy, but he's not an explosive receiver. And I think they're going to continue to get, try and get younger along the offensive line. You know, they they gave Barber permission to seek a trade. He's an okay, you know, aging. Backup, partial, you know, part-time starter type of player. I think that with Kelsey and with Peters, they'll eventually be moving on from those guys within the, if not this year, probably by next year. So I think there's still a lot of revamping to be done with Philadelphia. It's you know, you can't just go from uh, Chip Kelly in one year to no. fix all your problems. No, no, not at all. No, and they they 
and people can still talk about the players that he let go. They they never replay. They never replenished the cover. They just didn't. I'm not saying get those type of players, but try to get some equal value with the McCoys and the Jacksons and the Macklins. They haven't been able to do that. Um, uh, two more for you, and then on combine again, a couple minutes with uh, Jason Cole on this Tuesday. Uh, landing spots for these two: Brandon Marshall and Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson most likely be back with the Vikings. Yeah, yeah that's what I think too. Uh, you're right. I mean, I, again, I don't think there's going to be this overwhelming market for running backs. Certainly not any place that he wants to play. I mean, Dallas is not open. Houston's not really looking to spend that money at running back. So I think that leaves Peterson to head back to Minnesota to get the best deal, probably you know make $8 million a year, something along those lines. But it was pretty clear from the time that they let him go that they were trying to keep the bridges open mm-hmm. for a return. It yeah. was just like, hey, Adrian, we can't pay you 18, <laughs> but we're we're more than we're more than willing to let you see what the market's going to yeah. bear. And I think that there's not going to be much of, of anything for the running backs uh, because you've got a couple of guys. You got Latavius Murray, who's much younger. Yep. You've got uh, Jamal Charles, who's had similar injury problems, and then you have a truckload of guys in in the draft with Fournette, McCaffrey. Uh, Cook, and then the kid from Texas. I'm trying to remember his name. He's back there. You got Joe Mixon. You got you got a lot probably, of depth there. Yep. Yeah, you, know, you got a lot of depth in the first two three rounds. Um, and Mixon won't be first two three rounds, but he'll be there. He's, gonna, he's a very good player. He's going to probably go fourth, fifth, sixth round, something like that. And then about uh, 15 seconds quickly on Marshall. Uh, Marshall, I would say. Uh, that's open. Does he want to go to a contender and play for cheap, like go to a place like New England, or does he want to cash out and make money over the next two years? He's got to make a choice. Um, all right, before I let you get out here, real quick on the uh, combine. Um, you know, everyone talks about the players. We know what players and their stock rising and this and that, and everyone believes. And I want to ask you this. Um, Garrett, the defensive end from Texas A&M, is he going to be the top overall pick if the Browns decide, hey, we, we need that best available player, that, that player that's flat out, Going to anchor the defense, make some plays for the next decade. I mean, do you believe he'll be the top overall yes. pick? Okay, I think he'll be the number. I think he'll be another one, number one pick, and he's overwhelmingly that guy. And you can get a quarterback if you're Cleveland. You got the number twelve pick, and you have the number three, thirty-three okay. pick. And then you're going to get a reasonable candidate there. Conversely, with that, have you seen a player or talking to any scouts or GMs where? It looked on paper like he was going to be a flat-out stud, and then all of a sudden people are saying, you know what, this guy might turn out to be a bust. We always talk about the great guys that have the great combines and everyone's on high on them, but there's always that that player, like, like a Goldston, right? Everyone was just salivating over the, you know, Goldston years ago. A lot and, of people like, I mean, Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, the wide receiver. You know, okay. A lot of people loved him coming in because like, you know, he can catch anything, he can do this. And then he runs a 4-6, and people are like, Ugh. You know, so <laughs> you get you get that. Um, he's still a good player, and people want to draft him, but not as high as they were before, especially after you saw what happened to Laquan Treadwell last year, where he comes in and he just can't get separation from yeah. anybody. And sometimes it takes those guys a little longer to figure it out. So you get a little bit of that. All right. Yeah, there's always, like I said, there's always those great storylines, and everyone wants to know if there's going to be that uh... – that well, I mean, like, go back and look at LeGarrette Blunt. LeGarrette Blunt ran one of the worst forty times ever. I mean, he might have written, a, he might have run a four, he might have run a five flat forty, or a four eight, or something ridiculous, right? I mean, it's just terrible forty time. And he went undrafted. He's a really good football he is. player. He is. He is. It's, he's not. He's not a great one, but he's a good. He's a really good football yep. player. That's a good the point. kind of guy that you know the right circumstances you want to have. But he looked terrible during the combine. Yeah. I mean, just got awful. Yeah, you're right. Like you said, sometimes these guys are late bloomers. They get in the right system. It takes a couple of years. Um, all right, my friend. Listen, I appreciate the extended time. Go rest. Uh, I know in another day or two you'll be uh, punching the keyboards and on the phones. Absolutely. No problem. <laughs> Thanks, Jace. Appreciate it, pal. You got it. Bye. Be good. Jason Cole from uh, Bleacher Report.